deep walk out of Granbury. I need to give an outlook. If you follow the market the last month, it's really gone crazy. Um, I'll give you what my take is on it. Um, this year I'm going to give a lot of background information because that's what's really influencing a lot of the stuff that's going on out there. So I'm going to look at a um, quick overview of what, where we are today. Then we'll go and look at the crops, canola, wheat, barley, oats, peas, and have a summer. If you have any questions, just shoot your hand up and I'll see if I can answer it while we're going along. First of all, there's a lot of fundamental information that's brought us to where we're at today. This past year, we had unprecedented, unseeded acres in Western Canada. And that, we still don't know the numbers, they'll come out on Friday. The big stats can report comes out on Friday, and that will, could be a market loser. We had drought in Russia, the worst drought in about 40 years, and that's really affected the wheat markets. This is really holding prices up for us, and especially canola and other prices have dragged along with it, is this soybean movement out of the U.S. They are selling beans like crazy, and it's 61 percent of it's going to China. So China is a big player in our markets because of their buying beans and pulling our prices up. Did we have a U, uh, record U.S. corn crop? We thought we did. No, we did. Um, I think someone mentioned uh, the yield trend. It's supposed to be around 164 bushels. The downgraded this year's crop to around 157 bushels an acre. And that has really thrown a big wrench in the overall supply picture. We had unprecedented rainfall. You guys remember putting your gum boots on every day, right? Money around your yards. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Not here anyhow. But the rest of Western Canada was extremely wet. Record uh, U.S. soybean crop? No. Well, actually it is yes. I changed this when I saw some data and then I looked at the actual numbers. They did have a record crop this year. We've had three really unpredictable USDA reports that really pushed prices down the same day and then a week then a store recover. Next report, totally the opposite. And the latest report just before I remember it's day really shot prices up again. We had frost in Western Canada. That was September uh, 17th, the 20th weekend, right across the prairies. Because of all the rain in the uh, prairies, a lot of late crops got fried. So we're still not sure how much that affected yield. The grade we know is down. Uh, we may have lost a few bushels out there. And since July, the U.S. dollar has been declining against other currencies. And this is what we call macroeconomic factor, and it's a big, big factor in, in our thing, in our prices right now. So there's a lot going on. And now since the U.S. dollar is weak, a lot of the money is pushed out of investing in the financials and into the commodity funds. So there are big, big players in there buying and selling uh, commodity futures such as gold, uh, oil, and of course, wheat, barley, corn, soybean, soybean oil. So there's heavy fund involvement back in the marketplace. So there's a lot, a lot of factors in there. Worldwide, uh, these factors are in play. Uh, we're still in an economic cr world crunch. Ireland is the latest one that we're still not sure what's going to happen there. This U.S. dollar is a big player. Growing world population. It's not getting smaller. These funds, I, as I mentioned, are back in play. They're not buying five or six contracts. They're buying a few hundred or a few thousand contracts one shot. So they are really starting to push prices up or down. Crops for biofuel, the corn, I'm going to show a couple of charts right away. The corn chart shows how much corn is being used towards uh, biofuel, the ethanol, and it's huge. 
politics, China. That's the fact they're buying a big chunk of the world production now. And was it two weeks ago they announced they're going to try to curb their inflation by increasing the interest rates, which almost uh, shot most of our commodity prices limit down because they're such a big buyer. If they increase their interest rates in China, their buyers cost them more money, more to borrow money to buy products, which means they may not be on the marketplace. The other thing is U.S. foreign policy, especially with this uh, North Korea, South Korea thing going on right now. No one knows how, if they actually start uh, <coughs> throwing artillery across the water, what will happen. There's a lot of things in the background right now. So world population continues to grow. See that little arrow there? We're here right now, 2010, we're about just over 6 billion people. We're projected to hit 10 million by 2050. Another 40% more people to feed in the world. And we, our land base basically used up. There's still some land that they're redeveloping again in Africa and some other places, but we have to feed these people basically through technology now. Now that arrow is there, it's still there. Because world biofuel is using crop, uh, using crops is continuing to grow, and this is a chart of ethanol. This is ethanol production. Just look at the top red. That's how it's taken off the last five, six years. So that requires land to grow corn. If corn's not is going to be priced for ethanol, it's not being used to to grow wheat or coal or soybeans. Uh, feed us, uh, feed the human population. So there's a lot of things that are um, affecting us going forward. This is the U.S. dollar since July. Way back here, it's been on a downtrend. Just recently, it broke all this uh, trend line, and it's basically come back up to 81. But it's got ways to go yet to get what it was back in July. And how does this uh, U.S. dollar thing affect us? Well, it makes their products cheaper on the world market. So when their stuff is cheaper, they're the number one economy in the world, people buy the U.S. And as they're buying the U.S., it's good for economics. So that's a good sign. That's why beans have been moving like crazy, corn's been moving. Once their products get moving, that's good for most economies around the world. And also, as I mentioned, pushes available capital out of financials into physical commodities. So that's why there's a lot of fund activity now in the various uh, uh, gold great commodities. And they are a big player. So what happened in 2010? This is the rain map. See this brown guys? This is us. Aren't we lucky? This is the rest of... Uh, Western Canada, very, very, very wet. So basically, they got drowned out. They got, some guys got humongous yields, some guys got drowned right out where they got five bushels in an acre. But overall, where it's wet, you still probably get something harvested. That's uh, amounts of rainfall. This is a precipitation map. This is about anywhere from 15 to 50 percent above normal, the green, and then it just further east we went, the more rain we got, typically. Some parts of Manitoba, they're already worried about not being able to see next spring. So, so huge, huge factor this year in Western Canada was the moisture, and that affected uh, seeded acres. Um, going back, 2006 is when we sort of jumped into this new pricing regime for all egg commodities. That's when uh, the biofuel thing got kicked in big time. Where the U.S. started using a lot of corn to, for ethanol. So in the market rate was led by corn for the first couple of years. 2008, we had the shortage in wheat worldwide. So wheat led the marketplace in 2008. Last year, beans led the marketplace. A lot of bean movement. Beans supported us in our canola. I'll show you that when we go to our chart. 
This year being early in the year, we're pulling, keeping our uh, canola from drag, being dragged down to the eight, seven dollar bushel range. Then all of a sudden, Russia had their wheat problem, and now we're projecting to have a shortage of corn. So this has been a mixed bag this year. Corn's leading right now, leading some of this, and probably 2011 corn will again. You'll see acreage wars start right away between the corn and beans. Very, very profitable right now if you go uh, soybeans. Actually, anything. Prices are very, very strong. So, in a nutshell, 2008 in wheat, largest wheat crop on record. 2009, second largest wheat crop on record. That's why our wheat prices plummeted. Then last year, a drought in unseeded acres here in Canada. Quickly with beans. 2009, largest U.S. bean crop on record. 2010, largest Brazilian crop on record. Now, to this past year, the U.S. set a new record for their soybean crop. But however, the last two years, so if you look at good old economic supply demand, the demand has actually out did the supply in the soybean. That's why beans are so strong, even despite two record crops back to back in the U.S. Corn, old largest crop was in 2007, new largest crop was 2009, the world largest coarse grain crop, that's the corn, the barley, in 2009. This year, huge U.S. corn crop, but as I mentioned earlier, um, November, their production number is downgraded, resulting in very, very tight ending stocks now, projected ending stocks. And a lot of that has to do with the corn going to ethanol use. And of course, ours is our canola, largest crop on record, uh, 2008, second largest crop, 2009. This year, we would have had the record crop, except for unseeded acres, frost damage, rain, rain, rain. So, that's a quick down and dirty on canola. So, just a quick nutshell, when you look at all those factors that are happening, the, rock map, the, the markets are really rallied based on a lot of those factors. And in the long term now, you guys are probably sitting nice. We have entered a new era of uh, pricing for our egg products, and there's actually, with the population growing, uh, the usage, you could probably think probably look right for the next 20, 30 years in the long term. It's been reflected now in land prices, not only here in not just the beef country, but right across North America worldwide. People realize that uh, agriculture is going to be a, you know, very, very vital to keep this world going. So that's a lot of fundamental information.